This week, the world's third biggest steel company, Nippon Steel, warned about rising prices, the result of higher electricity, iron ore and coal prices. All of this, plus CO2 emissions, will create more pressure to find a new recipe for steel, so-called green steel. Now, Australia has ambitions in this area, but it's already starting from well behind, as Edward Boyd reports. Australia's ambition is to be a world leader in producing green steel. But well before we've made a single tonne of it, we are miles behind Sweden, which has already made more than 100 tonnes. The project is called Hybrid, and it's run by joint venture partners SSAB, LKAB and Vattenfall. So we started this process in 2016, uh, and first uh, we did a pre-feasibility study, uh, and in 2020 we were able to build this R&D facility, and as said then, uh, already this summer that was, we produced the first batch of fossil-free steel. SSAB is the largest steel sheet manufacturer in Scandinavia. LKAB and Vattenfall are both Swedish state-owned companies. LKAB mines iron ore, and Vattenfall is one of the largest electricity and heat retailers in Europe. These companies are figuring out how to produce green steel on an industrial scale by 2026. What we're hoping to do with this process is to show that it's actually possible to produce fossil-free steel. And you know that the steel industry stands for around 7 to 9% of the carbon dioxide emissions today. So if we can get rid of that, that's, of course, a huge contribution to decrease the carbon emissions in the world. The current process for making steel, the age-old recipe, if you like, involves burning coal and iron ore in a blast furnace to create pig iron. Alloys are then added resulting in steel. One of the side effects, though, is massive emissions of carbon dioxide. Steelmakers increasingly have um, interim carbon reduction targets, usually a, a sort of 20, 30 target. Um, they have to find ways to reduce emissions at blast furnaces if they're not going to replace those blast furnaces with zero emissions technology. There are several ways to make green steel. One is the direct reduced iron process, which is similar to the ancient way of making steel. Hydrogen, instead of coal, is heated with iron ore in a purpose-built arc furnace. The hydrogen reacts with the iron ore, creating water and sponge iron. If the furnace is powered by renewable energy and the hydrogen is made with renewables too, then you've created green steel. This is the technique which SSAB use with the hybrid project. With the existing prices on electricity, raw material and carbon dioxide emissions, the cost is around 20 to 30% more uh, than just a regular steel. Uh, but we also believe that our customers are willing to, to pay a premium uh, to get rid of the carbon dioxide emissions from their materials. Another company, Boston Metals, has a different technique called molten oxide electrolysis, which doesn't even require a blast furnace. An inert metal alloy is immersed in an electrolyte containing iron ore, which converts the iron ore into liquid metal and oxygen, with zero emissions. The MOE technique can use all types and grades of iron ore, rather than the iron ore pellets currently used in most furnaces. If you want to have CO2-free steel, which is being done in places like uh, Sweden, for example, where you're using hydrogen and a direct reduction approach and then an arc furnace, uh, the big difference there is we both use electricity. That's the similarity. But the difference is you need a very high grade of iron ore uh, for a direct reduction approach. We're a lot more flexible on that. But at the end of the day, both are, are driven by clean electricity. Uh, the hydrogen approach just uses hydrogen really as a, as a middleman to do the, do the process. We, we do it direct with electricity. Boston Metals was spun out of MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, by a couple of professors about 10 years ago. Since then, it's grown to have 80 employees and has attracted investment from mining giant BHP. Yeah, so relevant to Australia, BHP came in in our last fundraising round. Also, Ballet, uh, iron ore company from Brazil, came in. Our largest shareholder and the shareholder who led our first investment round was Breakthrough Energy Ventures, the big Bill Gates fund. Uh, but we've got a mix of other financial investors, some energy investors, uh, BMW uh, and the supply chain for green steel. So a very strong syndicate of 10, 10 investors. The Boston Metals MOE platform is about the size of a school bus and it can be scaled up to achieve a tailor-made manufacturing solution. 
2025 is when we'll have our first uh, demonstration plan. So we really say kind of 2025 validation of that commercial starting in 2026. In the short term, the world's largest steelmaking companies are finding new ways to reduce emissions without cutting production. And the easiest method is to continue using coal, but to inject some hydrogen into the blast furnace as part of the steelmaking process. This can reduce emissions by about 40%. It's something Blue Scope Steel have been looking into at Port Kembla. Blue Scope is still currently very blast furnace, blast furnace focused. They are planning to reline one of their blast furnaces and continuing to continue to use that for another couple of decades. So they are looking at ways to reduce emissions at their blast furnaces. They have started a project which is looking into the replacement of PCI coal with coke oven gas, which contains about 60% hydrogen, and then further down the line, complementing that with green hydrogen. So they've begun looking at this as well. SSAB produces about 8.8 .8 million tonnes of steel each year, but the company says customers are becoming increasingly interested in buying green steel. We also see a demand picking up uh, from the customer side uh, and during end of last year and beginning of this year, we have formed uh, numerous uh, partnerships uh, with global customers such as Volvo Trucks, Volvo Cars, Mercedes-Benz, etc. And they're now trying this material in their part of the value chain. We see a great interest from the transport sector, so that is both them cars and, and also heavy transports. Uh, but we also see it from other segments, uh, such as construction, for an example. Volvo trucks are now using SSAB's green steel to build the truck's frame rails. And as more steel becomes available, the green steel will be used in more of the truck. Boston Metals is receiving plenty of interest for its offering too. Uh, that's probably the most exciting part. It's just, I mean, in the, even in the five years that I've been with Boston Metal, just to see the demand for green steel grow from the, the steel makers, the automotive industry, the construction industry, that certainly helps us bring in bring in talent and, and bring in employees and members of the team, uh, and also show us that there's you know there's a demand. You know, the the market pull is is there. We don't have to convince the market.